Hello and welcome to Five Minutes in the Shed, uh, episode four of Project Triumph Tiger 90. Uh, right, first thing I've got to do is address something from last time. Uh, I know it's been a while since I posted, I've been on holidays to Devon, sort of biggest storm of the year, great. Um, last time I mentioned that I won uh, that uh, trophy there from the Green Turtles uh, Swimming Club. Um, and their um, Turtle Fest uh, bike show. Now, I got it in the neck from another bike club called the Grubs MRC, which is Motorcycle Rally Club, because they tell me that I win best bike at their motorcycle rally every single year. Now, I've been through the archive. I'm going to have a look. Let me show you what I've won from the Grubs rally. One second. Okay, so it seems they did have a little bit of a point, right? So... We've got here, um, that is the best British bike 2014. I think I won that for the Triton. Uh, then we've got uh, best bike uh, 2016. That's best bike, uh, sorry, 2015. That's best bike overall. I think my brother made that trophy actually. Um, I think that was for the Tiger 90 that I'm rebuilding now. Uh, then we move on to uh, 2016 here and they give me because they've given me best bike trophies for the previous years uh, they give me the grot bike trophy and they gave me that for i believe it was my triton again uh, so i won best british and then two years later best grot on that uh, then over in uh 2022 uh best bike and i think i won that one for the tribza uh so so actually, I haven't won it every year, and I've won it twice, these two, for my Triton. Um, but one for Best British, one for Grottiest Bike, once for the Tiger 90, and once for the Tribza. So I don't win it every year. Lads, um, I have won it a number of times, I must admit. I've got my patch there, I've got a load of badges somewhere as well, but I have no idea where they are. Um, so yeah, uh, shout out to the Grubs MRC who have the Ugly, Gub, Ugly Grub Ball Rally. Always a fantastic rally and um, uh, highly recommend it if ever you're past a flyer or you can find them on Facebook. Uh, great bunch of guys. Okay, on with the build. Okay, back on the bench. Right, so... Uh, we've got so far with taking it apart. Um, I've got the covers off and everything. Uh, There's a couple of special tools that I needed. So I've been over to my dad's house. I've um, I've raided his toolbox, which is great. And now I've got um, a I've got a, a valve spring compressor. Valve spring compressor because I need to take the valves out of the head. Uh, I've also got. Uh, my dad's handmade uh, Gudgeon pin uh, removal tool uh, for taking the pistons off. Um, I've got the front brake cable off my bike. Um, and I've got an extractor for the cam pinions. Um, and uh, I've got a, a drift for something else, can't remember what that was for. And I've got uh, uh, these tools as well, which come as part of the cam wheel extraction stuff so I've got the tools to do the jobs now um, I've got some pullers that will take the clutch center out so we can do that uh, I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna crack everything loose while the engine's still fairly complete because I might need to hold it while I loosen stuff off if I remember rightly the last uh, engine I did last 350 engine I did which was the um, Tribza engine uh, these uh, these were particularly tight. Uh, they're actually left-hand thread. They are good top tip actually. If anyone's doing this left-hand thread, don't forget um, uh, that one's right-hand thread. Uh, so I need uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack these loose. I might have to put some bits of wood under the piston, get a bit of uh, bit of you know power on it. Um, but need to take the oil pump off and stuff first. So I'm going to crack on with that and crack all the nuts and stuff loose and the crank nut the other side 
um, on the generator and uh, and then we'll take it from there cue the music <laughs> one or two off um, didn't video that but then I loosened all my nuts didn't video that uh, so we've got uh, both crank pinions now uh, uh, loose oh shit that was loose don't tell me I've accidentally tightened it no it's loose um, and uh, the the crank this one took a bit of moving tell me that was really tight um, and I've loosened the uh, crank nut at the end as well. So everything's now loose, so we can start taking this apart now. Um, so these nuts come off left hand thread, as I said, and as I said, left hand thread, and I told you all about that. I obviously started undoing it the wrong way because you know, habit. Uh, I did have to put a couple of bits of wood underneath the pistons uh, to hold the crank so I could get a bit of pressure on them. Uh, not ideal. Ideally, you do this while it's still in the bike. And uh, if it's still in the bike, you can put it in gear. Um, it's still bloody tight though, must admit. Right, so we've got that one off there. This one, not that size. Uh, uh, that size. This one's a bit different because it's got the offset pin to um, to drive the oil pump up and down. That one goes in there. Oh, that is minging in there. It's a little rusty. Why is that? Why would that be rusty? Not good. Um, why would that be so rusty in there? I don't know. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Um, and then this one comes off the normal way, like that. Okay, so um, these ones, you won't pull them off with your fingers. You just won't. This one slides off dead easy. You have to make sure when you put it back on, you put the timing dimples the right side because otherwise you can't see to time it. Uh, right now these need a special tool and that special tool is this bad boy here. All right, don't ask me what the thread sizes are, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but yeah, these go on. Do I need to put anything inside? I don't think I do. So that out a bit screws on the outer bit, left hand thread obviously, hmm that doesn't seem to want to go on, oh, it must go on, let's try it on this one. Don't tell me I've got battered threads. Come on. That doesn't look good. Why doesn't that look good? Oh, it's the right hand thread. <laughs> right hand thread on those. Left hand thread on the nuts. So, uh, that's got to tighten 
onto there I might just drop this back on while I do it Come on. Oh, put that on the wrong way. No. Yeah, that's more like it. Right. Oh, I won't fit back in now. Come on. Ah. Fucking thing. Right. Just need to tighten that on there. Grab that, yeah. No, that needs to get a fair few threads on because otherwise, I'll damage the thread when I try and pull it off. Okay, bear with me. I'm trying to put that cam pinion back on. Give me one second. Actually, I didn't even need one second, it slipped straight on as soon as you weren't looking. Right, so that's on there now, so now I can tighten that. I might have to put my bit of wood back under the piston again. Just uh, just stop it turning. No, not that way. That way. Seamless this is, it's like I rehearsed it. Spent all night rehearsing it and uh you know just for your viewing pleasure. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Right. and get that on a few more threads. I think the threads on these have had a bit of a uh, bit of butcher in the past. Not particularly smooth. So it's not my tool. My tool's good. But there we go. All right, so that goes on there. And this spins in here. There we go. And then you just turn it until you get an almighty cracking sound. <sighs> Might need a spanner on it. Took rather a lot that did, uh, and it's not loose yet, so I'm just going to check it. Oh, it started to come off. Yeah, it has started to come off. Just needs a bit more, a bit more enthusiasm.
Yes, yeah, coming now. Right. I'm not going to take that one all the way off until I've got the other one loose because there's still a fair bit of teeth in there that can hold that one while I'm doing it. Uh, so what I'm going to do, this one, obviously the threads are a bit buggered. I'm going to see what I can do with that and then I'll put the camera back on and show you them coming off because uh, I don't want to just drone on for ages swearing about a thread. So let me see what I can do with that. I'll be back. Okay, so I've reached a point, obviously, as soon as I uh, uh, stopped filming, this screwed straight on. Just a fine thread, big thread, yeah, what can I say? Um, you'll see it on the sped up bit. Anyway, uh, took this one off, this one came off treat, uh, that's the inlet cam and the exhaust cam, it's just that off there. Got it. A couple of little bits of swarf in that, I'm a bit concerned about. but. Inlet cam pinion, that's off as well. Right, so I'm not sure if these are marked as inlet and exhaust. Or if there's a way of telling. Let's have a look. Uh, can't quite remember if they're all the same or not. Um, well, either way, I'm going to keep them that way for now. Um, so that those two are off. Uh, actually, a bit of a tidy up. Bit of a tidy up. Right. Turn it around a bit so you can see. There. As I was doing this one, um, the tool, the end of the tool here, got a bit tight in the taper, so I had to just grind a bit off it. That's probably why you can see me uh, using the sparking machine in the in the background. Uh, right. Follow a reel and um, what's it wheel there? Uh, feel okay. Yeah, feels alright. Uh, and then the crank wheel at the bottom. Oh, that needs pulling too. So that's got to be pulled off as well. Just gotta be careful I don't lose the keys from the from the shafts. Oh look at that, that went on perfect look, it knows, it knows now, it scared me now. Right. Screw that one in. That should come off fairly easy on the crank. It's the cams that go super tight. Gonna need that, right? Yeah, it's coming now. Lovely job. To be honest, I know it's a bit of a pain when these are hard to take off. But I'd be a lot more worried if they fell off, you know, and they were super easy to take off. That would be much more of a worry. Uh, when you put these back on, make sure they're going the right way around, because otherwise you can't use a special tool. I've seen engines like that. Um, right. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Put on the keyway. Just oil. Right then, so to take the cams out, we take these screws out of these plates here, and then the cams can slide out the engine. Uh, I'm not going to do that just yet, I'm going to work on the other side first. Um, on the inlet, there's like a rotary disc valve on the other end that is very easy to lose. Um, so I'm going to be careful with those for a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the other side of the engine first. 
um, and we'll take it from there. I'm just going to put a, a letter on one of these so I know which one it is because I want to remember which is the uh, inlet and exhaust. If anyone see my scribe, let me know. Exhaust. Inlet. Okay. I've um, got to worry about that now. If they are different and you can't get them wrong, uh, feel free to mention it in the comments. Okay, so that's all out of the way, ready? Okay, so I'm gonna turn the engine around. Now, <clears throat> to take all this off, right? I've loosened that nut, the washer wasn't bent over, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video. Um, so I'm going to, uh, where do I start, I'll take the generator off, um, then I'm going to take all the clutch out, I'll take the clutch basket chains, sprockets all off, uh, and then there's a big nut, clutch nut in there, which is a bit tricky to take off, and uh, I'll, um, I'll show you that when I get to it. So, I think it's time for a bit of funky music. So I'm halfway in <clears throat> into here. So um, the wire's gone a bit hard and crispy, so I'm struggling to pull it through the pipe. So uh, I need to undo that before uh, to make the hole bigger, so I can get the wires through. That's why that's hanging there. Um, the Woodruff key is totally jammed in the shaft there, so that's something I need to to work on. Um, so move to the back to the clutch. I took the pressure plate off, no problem at all. Um, but what I've noticed is it's full of like clutch material, which is a bit weird because these don't really shed that much clutch material. Uh, but then, as I took the the pressure and the uh, the, um, the friction and the steel plates off, it should be six of one, five of the other. All right, uh, six steel plates, which are these ones. You can see it's got a ring on it where the um, the pressure plate presses on it, and then that's a uh, yeah, scoring from the, the friction. It's got one metal, then we've got one friction, two metal, two friction, three metal, three friction, four metal, four friction, five metal. Five friction, six metal, and then I've got an extra. There's an extra one in there. Well, I don't remember putting that in, to be honest. Uh, but this one was sitting against the back of the drum, uh, and it's, I don't know if you can see on the video. See the, um, you can see these like hole prints here, and that's from the holes in the back of the drum, which you probably can't see. Can you see them now? Yeah, and the holes in the back of the drum there, that's not designed to have a friction plate on it. So that's a bit weird. Uh, clutch did work okay, it did bind up a bit. Uh, it took some freeing off every time you got on it to ride it. But that's not right, so I need to address that. And I'll put them in there for later. <clears throat> um, uh, and I've noticed as well that the the drum on the inside has got some really rough edges uh, where the clutch plates have been chattering in it. And on the outer drum, they're really rough. Really, really rough. And they stop the plates sliding side to side. 
Um, I'll try and dress them with a file, but I'm wondering if I might need to get a new drum. But um, I'll have a look when I've got it off. Now to take this off, uh, you have to take the nut off in the middle, in there, but as you can see it turns, all right? Very difficult to hold still. So what you do is you get a couple of old clutch plates and make a, a thing to hold it together. Uh, I think I've got some old plates. Oh, look at that. No, they don't. Damn it. Well, they might do. Duh. Okay, might need to think of another thing. Those um, those plates are out of my Triton. But I thought they would... Uh, thought they would fit. Uh, actually, no. I, I, I'm sure I put new plates in there. The trips are. I'll have a look around, see if I can find some, and uh, I will continue with taking this off. Okay, we're in here. So surprisingly, none of that was as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, so I took all the plates out uh, of the clutch, and then the clutch centre, which is this, there, usually just slides on and off. I mean, it's, you know, it's a good fit, right? But it just slides on and off. And it wouldn't bloody slide off. It was It's really, really tight, like a really good fit on that really good um so um i mean you can uh, i mean you can just pull the whole clutch thing off but I, I like to get in there first so anyway what i did was i put a socket in it wherever it is put a socket into it and just give it a wiggle wiggle and then it slid off but yeah surprisingly tight so there's rubbers in there. I'm going to inspect those to see if they need to be uh, replaced. That's your cush drive. Uh, but as you can see, um, where's the camera? Where's the camera? You see these like teeth marks here. So those teeth marks there are from the from the clutch plates, and they're quite severe. So I'm going to have to have a look at that. Um, uh, uh, chain tensioner should have probably taken that off before I took the side cover off but usually you can just wiggle it and slide it over um, some people say you have to take the nut off I, I don't know, I've never had to so far um, but if you didn't know it was poking down that hole it might be best to unscrew it uh, so that's fine um, I've unscrewed the tube for the wire it's still really tight for that wire, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might have to warm it or something. Uh, the clutch drum, so that came off okay. Obviously, it's got an imprint of the um, friction plate, which shouldn't have been there. It's a bit weird. Um, and a bit of friction plate debris, which shouldn't have been there. Uh, this back side here feels a little bit worn that runs on this washer here um, which sits on the clutch center there 
A lot of people forget that. Don't forget that. Um, teeth are okay. Jiflex chain's okay in it. Uh, the centre of it's okay, but I don't know if you're able to see this, uh, but you can certainly hear it. So where the, oh, I don't know if uh, best pick this up on the video or not. Where the teeth slide in there. If you hear that. That should be nice and smooth, and it's not. And I've just picked up all the roller bearings. Uh, there we go, and it's not. So, uh, might be able to dress that with a needle file. I don't know, I'll price up what a new one is. Um, it's nice having a nice clutch. Yeah, clutches are nice um, when they work. Uh, so, yeah, if they're gonna drag, bit of a pain so I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to put that with the rest of the clutch for now a job for anon uh, this one goes in the back of it uh, this needs a special tool to pull it off I haven't got that special tool but I have got a pair of pullers so I'm going to pull it off uh, from the outside which shouldn't really do to be honest but it does work um, don't be tempted to stick screwdrivers behind there because this is only a little bit of cast plate and it, it will smash. Um, so you, you do have to pull it off square with pullers. I'm also going to have to pull the sprocket off as well. I thought that would come off. That sometimes come off, but uh, that's tight as well. So uh, I've got to pull the wire through. I've got to take that uh, sprocket off. I've got to take the clutch center off. So that's what I'm going to do now. First, uh, first stupid mistake, right? So, I've pulled clutch centers off with this, with these pullers, a couple of times, and got away with it. However, on this occasion, whether this one's slightly different to a 3TA or what, I don't know, or whether it's just very stuck, I don't know. Um, but I went to pull it off, and I broke it. Oh man, broke it. So there's a lesson. Get a proper Triumph clutch puller. Stupid mistake. Should have, should have just bought the special tool, and I didn't. And now I'm going to pay for it. All right. So there you go. There's a lesson. So I was going to pull this one off as well, but then I thought, you know what? I've got the ice for these now. So um, I'm going to take this off the proper way, and the proper way is with a Triumph puller, which screws into these two things here. All right. So. I'll bring it over a little bit to show you. Everything's getting a little bit oily. Right. Let's check you can see on the camera. So it's uh yeah, this bit here. Right now. We need a couple of bolts that screw into these. So these are uh head bolts off my Triton, I think. So they screw in there okay. Like that. That. And then you need a plate that goes across it to pull, and a, a bar that goes in the middle to push it on the end of the crank to pull it off. So, I've got a bit of steel, I've got some verniers, uh, I've got a drill, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make something. So I've got a measure across these, drill two holes, um, I think ten mil clear those, and then put some threaded rod through the middle. Right, on to uh, on to special tool making.
Okay, so <clears throat> some progress, right? I made my special tool puller. There it is. Look at that. That's I mean that's a thing of beauty. That is. It's um, uh, yeah, perfect for the job. <laughs> uh, but it worked. Uh, actually, can you see that? I'm I'm holding it there. I don't know if you even know if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. So there it is, in all its glory. Uh, and that did indeed uh, set the sprocket off. Now, you know, I said the Woodruff key was really stuck. I thought if I would give this a pull and cut at the end of the Woodruff key, it might just push it out, but it didn't. It wouldn't bloody come out. So I had to go back in again and back out again, back in again. I had a right old fight with the Woodruff key. Um, there's the camera there. You can see it's all battered. So I'm going to need a new Woodruff key. That was like properly stuck. I haven't seen one stuck like that for a long time. So, would have keep bad. Um, sprocket, good. Uh, that's all right. Uh, with my new special tool that I made. Um, clutch plates I need to measure. Uh, I did look it up in the book and I was wrong. Um, should have a friction plate. Should have six friction plates as well on this engine. Weird. Um, so that goes, yeah, that, the clutch was right. So I've just got to measure the thickness on that. Check there, okay. Um, managed to thread this wire out. So that's out with the uh, stator. That's good. So I'll put that somewhere safe. Uh, somewhere safe over here, maybe. Uh, so that's nice and safe. Um, so this is all ready to come out, right? Take that collar off there. That's for the oil seal. Uh, seals look pretty good, look nice and soft, still new. Everything in here is actually really good and razor sharp. Uh, probably why everything was so hard to come off. Um, it's nice, you know, because a lot of times you take these engines apart and the end of the crank's got been battered with a hammer and stuff. And this, this is nice. Um, chain tensioner was all good. Uh, uh, these studs all have to come out with it, they're alright. Um, I did break the hub, clutch hub, can't believe it. I've taken those off before. Uh, anyway, I've ordered the proper tool for the job. The shame of it, the shame. Well, but I did say when I started this channel that I'd keep it real, right? If I broke something or messed something up, then I'd just film. I'm not going to edit it, edit it out. Um, I'm just going to. Uh, drown my sorrows with a large rum and um, and kick myself a lot especially when I edit the video because I feel stupid um, so uh, a new uh, clutch center needed uh, need to measure everything else to see what's needed I probably could take the pistons off now but I think I'm done for the day Without taking this hub nut off, I can't take the plate off, can't take the plate off, can't take the sprocket off, can't take the sprocket off, can't take the gearbox out, which is the next uh, next part of the uh, the teardown, right? So, if we look at this side, now the cams are ready to come out. Um, I could probably do those, but um, I'm going to wait for a bit. Um, uh, yeah, so the cams are ready to come out. Uh, gearbox needs to come out, but I need to take the other stuff off the other side first. So, yeah, uh, almost there. So, my next phase, I'll have the club clutch hub nut puller. I'll pull that out. Um, once that's out, I can pull the transmission out. Once that's out, then the only thing keeping everything together really uh, is the cams. Uh, I'll take the pistons off safety, and then I can split the cases. So I think. I think in the next episode I'm going to um, I'm going to split the cases in half, and we're going to see how bad the cams are and what got damaged. Um, I mean, looking round it all, all looks fairly good. I think we're okay. Um, I think it probably all just needs a really good clean up. So, um, thanks for watching. Um, Feel free to go in the comments and take the piss out of me for breaking the clutch. Um, I deserve it. Very much so. And uh, I shall see you next time when we split the engine in half. Thanks for watching.